This video was kindly sponsored by the Nick Mon Foundation. Costa Rica's lush rainforests, biodiversity of plant species, and endless sunshine provide the perfect conditions for humans to live mindfully off the land. Today, we're visiting Alegria Village, where individuals and families from all around the world are doing exactly that. Welcome back to Going Green. Today we're at Alegria Village in the hills of San Mateo, Costa Rica, exploring what a community-driven, regenerative future looks like and getting to know the people who are making it happen. Located about an hour from the country's capital of San Jose, Alegria Village is a haven for those seeking to live a self-sufficient, mindful and regenerative life, while also ensuring that their impact is as minimal yet as beneficial to the surrounding environment as possible. Founded in 2019, Allegria Village was created by co-founder Stephen Brooks as a sister site to his other two eco-villages in Costa Rica, Punta Mona on the Caribbean coast and La Ecovia next door to Allegria. We had the chance to meet Stephen inside Allegria's stunning yoga shala. He told us more about how the village started and his hopes for its future. From a very young age, I just questioned everything. You know, it's like, I, and I just started thinking about like, who is the designer of this place? Things just kind of happened around us, you know, food systems, medical systems, governance, you know, and it's just kind of crazy, you know, and it's like, who's the designer behind it? And do we have any say, you know, like, do we have any say in this design? And, uh, and yeah, I kind of decided from a young age that I think we do, you know, I think we really can shift things. Like Punta Mona and La Icovia, what similarly allows Allegria to thrive is its capacity for regenerative living in its food system, community values, and building practices. I guess my big aha moment was I witnessed a playground full of indigenous children get sprayed by a Chiquita banana crop duster here in Costa Rica, on, I would say here on vacation, and it totally like rocked my world, like er, emergency break on life. Like, how can we be doing this? You know, these beautiful indigenous people that literally treat the earth like an extension of their bodies and here we are spraying them with neurotoxic chemicals so we can have cheap, flawless looking bananas. Like, how can we live in a world like this? Often people don't know that there's alternatives, you know, and at the same time, you know, people also just look the other way, you know. So when I first moved here, we started bringing groups of students down, high school and college students from around the world to show them how beautiful and magical Costa Rica was, but also the reality of the rainforest destruction and the cultural decimation of indigenous people and the kind of um, agricultural hell, you know, that was just like destroying all harmony. And, uh, and so with that, um, I first started Punta Mona, which is on the Caribbean side near the Panama border. And people could come and, and experience something different, you know, really experience something on the, on the physical side where like we physically designed it differently, like where our food came from, our water, our electricity, how we built our buildings. So Punta Mona just kind of became this, this collection of plants, you know, that I would, you know, travel and collect cool plants and plant them there and then spread them, you know, to people that visited. And that was kind of, you know, that's just been a mission of ours. And then after many years, I knew that we needed to do more, you know, and, and my parents were getting older. I wanted to have children. So I started thinking, what would a larger community look like? You know, and also kind of like in a replicable model where we can start doing this around. And, uh, and so right up the street from here is called Lycovia, which we started in 2000, we bought the land in 2006. And it took you know, many years, we put together a team, and um, now there's 45 families that live here, that live there from 22 countries. And the parents co-created a school that's called Casa Sula, which, um, which there's like 50 or 60 children in. And then four years ago, we started Alegria Village. And the, you know, the goal was to keep spreading this. And what, what lessons did we learn from Ecovia? Which lessons did we learn from Takotal? You know, I think the, the most profound thing about it is, it's like, who are your neighbors and why? You know, and it's like, how can we get more intentional? You know, and, and, and it's not like we want all of our neighbors. We don't want this kind of, you know, you know monocultured community where everybody's the same. Like I said, there's people from 36 countries. I don't, I don't know how, I should probably count how many religions and languages are spoken, you know? So people are very different. Yet, at, at their core, we want to surround ourselves with people with similar values, like people that really care about the earth and, and, the, and the, you know, ecosystems around us and the watersheds and where their food comes from and where their water comes from and, and, and the footprint that we leave collectively. 
Allegria's community garden holds everything from bananas to papayas, mangoes, goa beans and so much more. But our favourite plant of all is the shampoo ginger plant, used by indigenous people for thousands of years to clean both body and hair. Kira got to try it out for herself and we love the smell of it. As the community continues to grow, its goal is to virtually eliminate a reliance on outside products, as well as trade with other local businesses and communities as often as possible. We can't wait to see the sheer size and output of the food forest in only a few years' time. One of Allegria's core pillars is its dedication to finding ways to support the surrounding community, well beyond just providing jobs. The Allegria team has set up a non-profit organization committed to finding strategies to accomplish this essential mission. 98.5% of Costa Rica's energy comes from renewable sources, including hydropower, geothermal, wind, biomass and solar power, which supply Allegria's power needs. But residents are also incentivized to purchase their own solar panels if they wish to be completely self-sufficient. Water also comes from two wells and three springs located on the property, providing extremely clean water for all residents. In the shared spaces around the property, including the hive and the yoga shala, the open-air design was created to ensure mindful connection with one's surroundings, while also constructing spaces that offered collaborative opportunities for work, reflection, and fun for individuals and families alike. Whether you're looking to move to an entirely new place, or simply want to make where you're currently living more sustainable, a lot can be learned from the values, community, and regenerative living at Allegria Village. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see other videos just like this, then make sure you subscribe to the Going Green channel. We'll see you in the next one.